Hello friends, thanks for tuning in here to listen to our discussions on books we read. Today we are featuring yet another very acclaimed writer whose books are widely loved by both young and old readers. Philip Pullman is the author of many books featuring young adventurers like the New Cut Gang set in London of last century, Sally Lockhart Mysteries, and he has also retold stories like Aladdin and the Enchanted Lamp. But it is the series called His Dark Materials, also sometimes referred to as The Golden Compass, due to the name of the first book and movie adaptation by the same name, that is one of our favorites. This series reimagines our world as set in a multiverse and asks the big questions about the basic nature of humans and spirituality. The series has three books, The Golden Compass, The Amber Spyglass, and The Subtle Knife. But there are also a couple of peripheral books which support the series. And today we are talking about the book called Lyra's Oxford also known as the Red Book, as it is published with a beautiful red cloth-bound cover and is a collector's edition from Random House. It contains a short story called Lyra and the Birds, a pull-out map, and a few other things like advertisements for books and travel catalogues, a postcard written by Dr. Mary Malone, a brochure for cruise ship Zenobia and some more artifacts that the series lovers would love to explore. Now, as the author says, this book contains a story and several other things. The other things might be connected with the story or they might not. They might be connected to stories that haven't appeared yet. It's hard to tell. Before I go into the details of this story, let me give you a gist of the series so far if you haven't had the chance to read his dark materials. Lyra Blackwa was a bright 12-year-old child living at Jordan College, Oxford, from where her destiny took her to travel to North Pole of her world, making friends on the way with polar bears, witches, Egyptians until she stepped through to other worlds. She met Will and they went through the land of the dead together until at the end of his dark materials they returned to their own worlds with a promise to meet each other in spirit at least once a year. In Lyra's world she always has her demon, Pentelimon, and we meet them again sitting on the roof of the Jordan College. It has been two years since the war ended, and Lyra is now 15 years old. She is studying at St. Sophia's school. On this evening, though, Lyra and Pen see the flock of starlings chasing what appears to be a lone bird. However, it turns out to be a witch's demon called Ragi, who has come looking for Lyra from a faraway land. Ragi asks for Lyra's help to save his witch, Yelena Pesets, who has fallen sick to a new kind of illness, which kills the witches but leaves their demons behind. Ragi claims that there is an alchemist called Sebastian Makepeace who lives in Jericho, Oxford. Sebastian can provide a cure for this illness and Lyra must take Ragi to his house. Lyra agrees to help and finds Sebastian Makepeace's address from the dictionary. She and Pentelimon escape from the school at night and start the journey towards Jackson Street in Jericho with Ragi. 
On the way, Ragi is attacked by pigeons. In spite of their willingness to help Ragi, both Lyra and Pen are feeling anxious by this time. As they reach Mr. Megpiece's house, Pen takes a quick look through the window to discover that the alchemist is lying unconscious on the floor and there is a very real witch in there with her cauldron. It's a trap. What happens next and why? As Lyra says, everything means something. So how does it all fit in the big picture? I leave it to you to explore in the book itself. So on to my thoughts about it. The book is called Lyra's Oxford. So allow me to start with Oxford itself. There is a poem by Oscar Baedeker in the coasts of Bohemia. Oxford, where the real and the unreal jostle in the streets, where the North Parade is in South and South Parade is in the North, where paradise is lost under a pumping station, where the river mists have a solvent and vivifying effect on the stone of the ancient buildings, so that the gargoyles of Magdalen College climb down at night and fight with those from Wickham, or fish under the bridges, or simply change their expressions overnight. Oxford, where windows open into other worlds. How uncanny it is sometimes that a whole world can emerge from literary musings like this. It fits to Lyra's Oxford so well. We enjoyed this little story that forms a part of the world of the golden compass, the amber spyglass, and the subtle knife. Usually, most stories featuring children and young adults end with a happily ever after. And we keep wondering what happened to those children as they grew up and faced the world as adults. Although Lyra's Oxford is only a short story, it also contains a few pieces that will form a part of the stories yet to be published, thus providing the links and clues that link the whole stories and the lives of the characters together. Some of these links are already part of the trilogy called Book of Dust, which is currently being published, and the final book is yet to be released. Lyra's Oxford has all the elements from his dark materials that made it so appealing to young readers, including witches that take sides in the war and win or lose, humans who try to make the best of what life gives them, children who try to make the sense of the way adults behave and how the world around them is shaped. And it's all happening in Oxford, the magical place that is so full of possibilities. Lyra's character is very strong and in this book it is good to see that she hasn't lost her spark or her curiosity to explore the world and her connection to nature, including the birds around her, and her untamed desire to help others in spite of all the troubles she has gone through in past. She will carry on leading a life that is full of adventures, and Pen is always there, so she is never alone. I liked the book, and I think it has gained a lot of popularity with all the lovers of the series. It is also been published as, as an audiobook by Random House Children's Book Audio. The book is read by the author himself in a full cast, making it a really enjoyable experience. So I would recommend that if you have a few hours, then there is a really good short story to explore here. And if you must do it on the go, then give the audiobook a try. Please do let us know if you have read Philip Pullman's works and whether you like them 
and also if you have any other suggestions for us. Thank you for listening.